Welcome to Fresh Off the Set. I'm Carrie Hawker Diaz. And I'm David Osmond. And I'm Laura Murray. We love the fact that you have tuned in and are listening to our podcast. Hello to everyone. Yes, thank you so much. This is uh, fun to have you guys. And w- this is a great podcast today. This is our buddy, Larry Gelwicks, the getaway guru. This guy's amazing, I right? I mean, he really is. I feel like he's basically family. Is oh. he our Uncle Larry? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uncle Larry. <laughs> the thing is, every time... We get our rundown, which is, you know, our, our fancy word for, you know, the schedule for the day. And we see that Larry's coming. Oh, Everyone just... has, oh, Larry, oh, Larry's coming. Even the guests that are on the show that day are excited the day they're there if Larry's He's there. He's a celebrity. Yeah, they didn't know before when they leave, they love Larry. To know him is to love him. Oh, it's absolutely. so true. He, yeah. he lightens up a room, just, just a, a ball of energy. And he... man, I don't know how he keeps that energy because he travels like crazy. I mean, he goes and goes. Every time we wa- he walks in, we're like, okay, where have you been? Where did yeah. you get back from? He's like, oh, just Egypt, just casual. And then he's like, and tomorrow I'm going to Thailand. Like he just exudes joy yeah. and not only that but kindness yeah, yeah. he is so kind and, and a wealth of knowledge his yeah. i mean his experience and his ability to regurgitate those experiences and saying where things are where they happen his historical you know uh, background of things it's so cool the one thing is on my bucket list is to go on a trip with larry at I some point on yeah. all of our bucket lists 2024 we're gonna go with larry somewhere yeah, right larry, and, and, and he lives that? out of a suitcase and it's easy because he just has like four hawaiian shirts and it makes it super <laughs> <laughs> he's just Picks out one and yeah, he's just, good to go. And which one am I doing today? This is Tuesday. Oh, there's the Tuesday Hawaiian shirt. But he's so awesome and fascinating. His historic background, just in life of being a coach and a mentor and rugby teams, like the the movie that was made after his life. It, yeah. it, it, there's so much to this guy that that you don't realize until you really you know go under the hood and see what this guy's about. We it's actually amazing. we talked about that. I'm glad you mentioned it. Um, yeah, you see, Larry is like he's a travel guy, right? He's a yeah. getaway guru, but he also does speaking. He pub- he does public speaking, and he's he is so inspiring. And yeah. we talk a little bit about that um, and how important it is uh, when he coach uh, yeah. what he liked to teach yeah. uh, when he was coaching. Yeah, a tough guy. But what a sense of humor. Yeah. He's oh, always looking it. for the pun, the joke, and, and the razz. And that's why you just love him because he's, <laughs> just he's like that Uncle Larry. <laughs> yeah. he's, he's amazing. Yeah. Can he, you tell we just adore Larry? Yeah. We yeah. do. And love we it. think you will too. Thanks yes. for listening to this. Should we give it a listen? Let's do it. You know him. You love him. He has been on Fresh Living multiple times. We joke that he needs a key card to the building because he's basically an employee here. Larry Gelwix, how are you? Carrie, it's great to be here with you. Kind of a different setting. Usually it's Fresh Living, that great afternoon program that you and others uh, put together. That's right. Every day at one. But we get more time with you today because it's our podcast. So that's what I love. How long have you been coming on Channel 2? Oh, my gosh. Um, I really have... Uh, two appearances on Channel 2. Fresh Living has been, since the beginning... 13 years. 13 years. Yeah. But uh, probably maybe 17, 18 years ago... Wow. uh, I was invited to do The Getaway Guru. That's my radio name, The Mm -hmm. Getaway Guru. And I come on as a reporter. Now, pre-pandemic, I would come on the set sit with the anchors on the set, and it's a straight news report. It's not a commercial. Yeah. It's a news report on what's happening in travel. Maybe the passport requirements have changed. Maybe an airline is having a big sale, but it's news. They are great segments because they're they're very valuable to viewers because we know, oh, well, passports are changing, so we need to do this. Exactly. You know, you're keeping everybody up to speed. It's very timely. Then with the pandemic, to reduce foot traffic in the studio, I was asked to film it outside anywhere I wanted and just send it in, which I did. After the pandemic, it was kind of funny because they said, okay, you can come back in the studio. And I said, no, thanks. I know. I want to film it. I uh, Recently, I was in Vietnam. I filmed it in Vietnam, in Thailand, in Africa, all of the places that I travel. 
I video that segment. Yeah. And it's really funny because when I'd co- I used to come in the studio, you know, Ron and Mary and the others are in nice dresses and suits. <laughs> I wear the loudest Aloha <laughs> shirt that I can find. I don't and know if I've ever seen you not, and that is your signature. You are is. in the Aloha shirt every time. I've been walking down the streets of Salt Lake and people, they, they don't say so much I recognize your face. But I've had people say, I recognize that shirt. <laughs> Seen it on TV multiple it's times. A, it's been a great partnership with KUTV Channel 2. Well, we just love you. You are family here to us, absolutely. But I want to start from the beginning. What got you started in the travel business? Oh, Carrie, where do I start with that one? <laughs> I am a hopeless travel junkie. You I just mean, loved abs- it from the beginning. I really did. You know, I grew up in San Francisco, and uh, I would go down to the wharf and watch the uh, the uh, freighters, the cargo ships, and passenger ships. Back in the you know 50s and 60s, people would travel. The golden age of cruising, where they would travel on a cruise ship as a means of transportation. And uh, the uh, Matson lines had two ships, the Lurleen and the Mariposa, that would sail San Francisco Honolulu round trip. Wow. I would watch them push out from the marina there in San Francisco along the Embarcadero, sail right under the Golden Gate Bridge and dream that someday I could go somewhere. When I got my driver's license, I used to drive out to SFO, San Francisco International, uh-huh. and no security in those days. It was a different era. And I would watch planes take off and land. Pan Am used to have a flight that Pan American World Airways mm-hmm. had a flight every day from Honolulu to San Francisco to arrive about 3.30. I would go and sniff the people. <laughs> yeah, I, I really would. Now, because they're all bedecked in these flower lays, tuberose and plumeria, and they get no jetways, come down the stairs into the gate area, and the whole departure, arrival gate was fragrant with the smell of Hawaii. Just so, yeah, off the plane from beautiful Hawaii. I'm sitting there, sniff, sniff, sniff. I w- at nighttime, I'd read National Geographic and World Atlases and This maps. is fascinating, because I know how much you obviously love travel, but I didn't know it started yeah, so it young. Yeah, it started very, very young. That's really cool, Larry. Okay, explain to our listeners your job and what you currently do for a living. We know you travel everywhere, yes, and it's amazing we love following you. Well, I'm uh, currently vice president at Morris Columbus Travel. It was a merger of Morris Travel and Columbus Travel that people know me from. And uh, I work in in a variety of areas. I work with our Morris Meetings and Incentives Department, which is incentive travel, uh, where companies use travel as an incentive for their best customers or best employees, you have a performance level, you get this wonderful trip. And uh, Corey is our president of the meetings and incentive, and I work very closely with him. I work with the group department and uh, putting our group tours. We offer over 100 Morris Columbus escorted tours every year. You can check them out at morriscolumbus.com. Scroll down to escorted tours and click on and you'll see. And I escort I escort or host a lot of them. One of the nice things about ownership, as I'm one of the co-owners of the travel company, is I get to pick where I go. And there, there's no democracy here. It's like, okay, <laughs> let's see. Uh, we have this trip going to Tahiti in January. You know, I think I'll take that one. Yeah. And we have a junior high band festival in lizard nose north dakota in january <laughs> bill you'll you'll love it i think bill you're yeah bill you're gonna you're just so gonna love that's that. what i do and uh, i love meeting people talking to people about travel well speaking of that when people see you out and about we know you as the getaway guru where did that phrase come from well you know i have been hosting the travel show for 32 years Um, It currently originates with station KNRS, a mega station, iHeartMedia, here in Salt Lake City, and then goes up on the Westwood One satellite. And we're syndicated from the Rocky Mountains, the Wasatch Mountains, all the way to the Atlantic Ocean. That's so cool. And we have a large number of stations all across the country listening to us. Now, locally, 
uh, KNRS 105.9 FM 570 AM. And we also have stations in Cache Valley and uh, Cedar City and St. George, KDXU down there, and KSUB in Cedar City, KOAL in Price and Moab, KVNU up in uh, Logan and Cash Valley, and then KID, of course. It, I mean, it goes on and on. So that's where you got from the show. Well, the, the station started calling me the getaway guru, and I said to them, that's the cheesiest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> Don't call me that. They just kept doing it, and it stuck. Even my kids call me, oh, the guru is here. <laughs> the guru. Well, that's what we, we absolutely call you. You are the getaway guru. Okay. Um, speaking about your past a little bit, you used to coach the Highland rugby team. What is one of your favorite memories from doing that? Well, I did for 36 years. I was the volunteer head coach of the Highland rugby team at Highland High School in Salt Lake City. Also was uh, for a number of years. Uh, the assistant varsity football coach as a volunteer. And uh, the team's success, which when I retired in 2011, after 36 years, uh, our varsity record was 418 wins and just 10 losses in 36 years. We used to joke, we have a bad game about once every four years. And that included 20 national championships and so many memories, thousands of boys coming through the program. Hollywood caught wind of I was going to say, there was a little movie a made movie. about it. Uh-huh. It opened in theaters coast to coast called Forever Strong. It tells the true life story of Coach Gelwicks and the Highland rugby team. I think my greatest memories, there were some incredible wins uh, internationally and, uh, of course, the national championship. But my greatest memories are the relationships that you build with not only players, but their families. I remember a a boy in fifth grade coming up to me after a game, waiting his turn to talk to me, and he said, Coach, I'm going to play for you someday. Oh, that's so cute. And then when he got into middle school, we we took, uh, we had players from grade seven, to 12. 7 to 12. We pulled in the middle schools. And what doesn't come through in the movie is how big the team was. We had over 200 players, 16 coaches, all of us volunteers, none of us taking a dime out of the program, wow. five different age grade teams. And this boy, uh, when he joined us in seventh grade, he had grown a lot, uh, came up and said, Coach, I'm here. He and actually did play he for did. you. He actually did play. But what it was is seeing these young men and hoping them grow up in a very troubled time, Ho- hoping that they grow up with their feet on the ground, mm-hmm. with their heads screwed tight on their shoulders, and hopefully, you know, avoiding some of the junk of life. And I believe that I will be judged as a coach, not with a national championship, not when that boy graduate from high school, but in 10, 20, 30, 40 years after that boy has graduated, what type of what type of man is he? What type of husband, father, community member? What type of human being? Human being. Mm-hmm. What is he doing in his church or synagogue or other worthy events in his life? That's how I will be judged. Oh, I got the chills. Larry, that's really, that's incredible. That's so powerful. And that's the kind of person you are. You know, that, that really is. Um, did any of those lessons you learned while coaching translate over into the business world or benefit you in the travel industry, would oh, you say? Oh, yeah. You know, I, I've been in the travel business, my goodness, um, going on 45 years now. My, it has so changed, you know. I remember all airline tickets were handwritten. And you had to call to me. I mean, so much has changed with that. But lessons, you know, there's a couple of things that I used to tell the uh, rugby boys that translate into business. Cause I was in the travel business while I was a volunteer coach. Oh, you did both. Okay. Oh yeah. It was simultaneous and owning your own business. I could leave for practice in the spring uh, to the rugby team. But something I used to say, it doesn't matter who scores. It only matters that we score. Mm-hmm. And nothing good in life happens by wishing, wanting, or hoping. Good things happen by doing. I don't want you to be somebody else. I want you to be your own best self. And one of the greatest lessons I have, and we have this 
in society so completely backwards? Why is it that most New Year's resolutions, self-help programs, exercise programs, diet programs, professional programs fail is we have it backwards. It's all about attitude and effort. And it's like, well, you know, if, if I can uh, just change my attitude, then my behavior will change. I got to get my head around this exercise program or this new business pro forma. That is so messed up mm -hmm. because what I learned in 36 years of coaching and in my career, I've been CEO of an airline and I've had a great business career is that, I mean, people tell you all the time, Larry, you need to change your attitude. I get that from Kathy, my wife, three or four <laughs> times a day. You know what bugs me about that? She's right. She's absolutely right. Good job, Kathy. <laughs> yeah, Good job. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, I can fake it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what I learned, Carrie, is that we can change our attitude. And I define attitude as that emotional, spiritual, psychological place that we're in how we view ourselves, the world, and others. It's much more than, oh, I have a, you know, I don't like pickles or something like that. But what I learned is if you want to change your attitude, you have to change your behavior first. Attitude change follows behavior change, not the other way around. I learned that in coaching. I learned that running an airline. I learned that in business. I've learned that with my family. In fact, because of the movie, a whole new career, side career, started for me, speaking at business seminars, companies, uh, conventions. Largest convention I've spoken at was 10,000 people. 10,000 The smallest people. was 13. It was, a, it was a, hardware, a computer hardware company in Chicago, the CEO and all of his officers. And it's, it's all about uh, leadership, attitude, and effort. And if I can give a shameless self-promotion plug. Of course. If you want to check out some, uh, some clips of my speaking engagements, go to LarryGelwicks.com. LarryGelwicks.com. And uh, you, can see, you can see a lot of videos of the events that I've spoken at. But that's what I learned, Carrie, is change your behavior. And it's actually biblical. Jesus Christ himself said in John chapter 7, verse 17, if any man will do his will, meaning the Father, if any man will do his will, then he will know. You have to do it, and then the attitude changes. Well, That's the greatest lesson I learned. Larry, I knew we'd be talking about travel on this episode, but I didn't know we'd be getting such gems of knowledge from you. That was so powerful, and now I know we can book you for motivational speaking. You're just well, you're think so about, incredible. Think about this with families. Is there an attitude, by my definition, a psychological, emotional, spiritual frame of mind in your spouse or partner, in your children or grandchildren, that you'd like to have some adjustment? Identify a behavior that has to change first. And they have to buy into it. Maybe compulsion going on a vacation. How about a vacation with Morris Columbus Travel? That will help you feel a little better. That doesn't require compulsion. <laughs> okay, so what is your favorite place to travel to. We're always, when you come in for segments and we're filming, we're always like, okay, where are you going? Where have you just been? We love hearing your stories. Do you have a couple? Yeah. I have to answer that question because I'm asked that all the time with a question. What's the purpose of the trip? You see, for sheer, mm. for sheer beauty that overloads the senses, that boggles the mind, French Polynesia, okay. Tahiti, Moorea, Raiatea, Nukuhiva, Hiva Oa, th these different islands of French Polynesia. For something exotic, different, wonderful people, good value, perfectly safe, Thailand. I, I thought that you, you were knew that. Say, yeah. And in fact, if it weren't for our kids and grandkids, Kathy and I would live in Thailand. You love Thailand. Uh, You've talked about that a lot. It's the people, yeah. the culture, the food, everything about it. Now, for history, it's tough to beat Europe and the Middle East. True. For adventure, there's nothing that's comparable to an African safari in Kenya during the so-called Great Migration, the ultimate National Geographic oh. event that only takes place in the months of July, August, and September, where it seems the whole continent, two million uh, wildebeests on the move, half a million zebras, 
Uh, I mean, we go there, and by day three, we've seen 50 species of animals, not including birds. That's phenomenal. That would be an amazing trip. It is. Let's go. I Let's go. I like how you framed that, though. That was really, because you can say, yeah, these are my favorites, but what are we talking about? Is it adventure? Is it pure beauty? Is it value? Is it right. uh, history? Is it education? So that's a good way to, if you're trying to figure out where to go, what are you kind of looking for? That's That was a great way. I loved hearing those. Okay, what tips do you have for people who are traveling? Um, I know you have so many, but do you have a few? Uh, I think the best advice I would give is don't over plan. Take time to walk in the marketplace, sit at a cafe, mm. um, dine at a local restaurant, engage some of the people. And what I tell people to do is take a just a piece of paper, like a notebook, you know, eight and a half by 11, and divide it into three columns, A, B, and C. Now, then determine your itinerary. I, I, this is how I plan my own travel. In the A list is, these are the must-sees. If I don't see this, I will die. Okay, so A, A group is must-see. Must-see. B is, I really, really, really want to see this, but if I, you know, if I don't make it, Somehow life will go on. Okay. 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 <laughs> the C list is if it works out, I'd I'd really like to see this, and then drive your uh, schedule your time based upon the A B C list. And sometimes, for example, you can't see it all. True. I'm going to Europe for ten days. I can't see it all. Don't see it all from the inside of a rental car. Maybe you're going to see major cities, London, Paris, uh, Rome, or a regional, the Bordeaux region, uh, Tuscany, the UK, um, the Lake District of Scotland. Mm. And that's where an experienced and professional travel advisor can help you so much. Not only save money but to maximize your time. And that's what we do at Morris Columbus Travel. That's a good point. Because I've always thought of, yes, you're the best to go to because you're going to help us save money, but also maximize our time. Because you're right, when you go on these vacations, we only have, you know, three, four, five, seven days to go and take off work. And well, so you take help. A t- yeah, take a 10-day trip, Carrie. And that's the next thing I do is I number one to 10. Day uh, Number one, say Salt Lake, London. Day two, arrive London. Day 10, um, Rome, Salt Lake City. Mm-hmm. Well, my 10-day trip really now is seven. True. And you want to block that out and don't over-schedule yourself. Don't over-schedule it. Leave some, I love that. Sit at a cafe. People watch. You know, walk in a park. Don't ever, that's really good. Don't over-schedule yourself. Any other tips that you want to throw out there? I know there are so many. Yeah. Um, do your own research because there's no right or wrong answer. What if, what is on my ABC list may not be your ABC list, but so do research online, gather the information, check the days that, for example, museums or attractions are opened or closed. Mm, good point. They're not all open seven days a week, and then plan that out, keeping in mind many uh, attractions require advanced purchase. Okay, that's, that's a really good point. Um, what do you love most about traveling? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> do we have an hour? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's the experiences. You know, we have a term now we call experiential travel, where you're having experiences. Uh, and, you, I mean, you just get out amongst the people. I think what it does, uh, Kathy and I, have five children. They're all adults. They're all married. They're all doing very well. They've blessed us with 12 grandchildren. I hope there's more. Um, I hope you're listening to this podcast. We've kids. met one of them. They <laughs> yes. came, yeah, yeah, he hung out on yeah, the show. Yeah, yeah. He was so cute. Yeah. Uh, anyway, um, our kids, we, we traveled with our kids growing up all over the world. And it opened their eyes. It opened their understandings. They have a Tongan grandmother, you know, adopted them. Grandma Kava in Nukolofa Tonga. <coughs> we have friends from Africa, from New Zealand, from Canada, from South America. We stay in their homes, and they come to the States and stay in our homes. And I would say our children grew up without prejudice. Uh, you know, sometimes we can live kind of an insular environment where we think everybody's like us, mm-hmm. and they're not. And we learn to appreciate different points of view. Other cultures. They saw they saw the world. That's really yeah. a great and, gift. And it helped. It's an education. You know, 
My uh, daughter, Emily, uh, was in the second grade. So what was she, about seven years old? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seven or eight. Um, they were having a world history, you know, basic for second graders. Sure. And the teacher held up a picture of, um, of, uh, of, of London, you know, and uh, of Westminster Abbey and, uh, and the Parliament Building. And she says, do any of you students know what this is? And my daughter, <laughs> seven years old, raised her hand and said, that's Westminster Abbey. How cute. Well, how did you know that? <laughs> Well, my dad took me there. Wow. And then she decided, the teacher decided to stump her. Well, do any of you know what's under the floor of Westminster Abbey? Emily raises her head and says, <laughs> dead people. Because <laughs> they buried them under the floor. Right, right. You know? But and a seven-year-old knowing seven -year -old that. A seven-year-old knowing that. You know, my eight-year-old Milo um, has, says, Papa, that's what they call me, Papa. I want to go to Japan and he's learning Japanese at eight years old because he wants to go to Japan. Mm -hmm. His father is Japanese American and uh, he, you know, we make tempura when he comes over to our house, but he's learning Japanese. And I told him that when he's 10, I would take him to Japan. Oh, that's so cool. What memories you've given to your it children is. and their grand? I mean, that's like what you think of. That's what you remember, you know, as a kid. And speaking of kids, in, do you have one tip out of all of them traveling with kids? Because I just heard you're talking about taking seven-year-old or six-year-old to London. I've thought about doing that, too. So it's doable with yeah, kids. It is. Try to avoid connecting flights if possible. It's not always possible. Go for the nonstop. And the advice I'd give, Carrie, really depends on the age of the children. If they're teenagers, make sure they have their electronic devices and are well fed. <laughs> yeah. You know, we don't want those hangry teens. That's right. For the younger kids, games. Avoid games that have small pieces because you're going to lose them. They're going to be all over the airplane uh, floor. If you have infants or any children still uh, in diapers, take a large extra supply. There's winter delays. There's uh, airline traffic delays. Mm -hmm. There's cancellations. And sometimes you're going to be stuck at an airport a very long time, and they don't necessarily have diapers and wipes and things like that. True. Bring extra formula. So carry on. Them. Exactly. Okay. Carry on, carry. Carry on, carry. Yes. That's right. We got a new name for you. <laughs> carry on, carry. I'm lots of baggage. Yep. Um, okay. How have you seen the travel industry change over the years, Larry? Oh, it's like light years, carry. I told you, no. When I first started uh, some 45 years ago, all airline tickets were handwritten. And when you called the airline, they didn't have computers. They had like index cards. And it was a big lazy Susan in their reservation. Oh, you wow. want to go to San Francisco? And they'd pull a card out and put it on that flight. And now it's, you know, information overload. I am a huge fan of the internet for travelers. Do all the research that you can then bring it to us, and I promise you we can add to it. One of the interesting things is, for example, cruises. We can meet or beat anything you find online. Your cruise deals, when you come on Fresh Living and talk about the cruise deals, it Crazy. blows me away. Yeah. Well, Morris Columbus Travel is the largest seller of Hawaii, Mexico, Europe, cruises in the entire Intermountain area. And I, I don't mean this to, like, pat us on the back, but the cruise lines, as an example come to us with promotions that are not available even on their own website. Oh, wow. They will bring us. What's kind of funny, some of the times say, well, you know, can you promote this? Other times, they'll bring us a deal. Maybe it's a discount, an upgrade, and a free this, a free that. And they say, listen, you can do this promotion, but you can't advertise it. If people call, you can add to it. And of course, oh. on the travel show, I, I advertise it anyway. Right. You know, what are they going to do to me? He's a getaway guru, people. <laughs> but, but that's how it's changed the technology. I also think in some respects, travel has become less personal. Mm. You know, uh, uh, and it doesn't have to be. Uh, I, we see much more mass marketing than 40 years ago. Sure. And it has changed, but... That's what I think we try to do at Morris Columbus Travel. 
is a very personal experience, you know. Uh, I remember I was uh, working with an account in Houston, Texas. This was some years ago. It was a $15 million travel spend account. <laughs> so just small. <laughs> That's a, that was a pretty good size one. Yeah. And I w- we fortunately won the account. And But I would speak at the new employee meetings at Morris. Uh, and I remember telling these travel advisors that when grandma comes in and wants a $49 ticket to Denver to see her grandchildren, she doesn't care that we just won a $15 million account. Mm-hmm. She, in her mind and in our mind, is the most important thing we have to do is get grandma to Denver to see her kids for 49 bucks. You know, that that's how we try to approach it. To everyone. Everyone. Yeah. 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 Okay, at, with Morris Columbus Travel, you have cruises, you have deals. Anything else you want people to know about the company? Well, uh, we've been around since 1960. Uh, you want to be careful who you deal with. And there's a lot of good travel companies. Uh Last year, we had some prominent Utah-based travel companies go under, file for bankruptcy. One of them in particular, there are 2,200 claims, people who had paid deposits or full payment, $2.6 million was gone. And they're out. So again, no dis... There are a number of really good companies. Morris Columbus has won the Best of State Award for the last three years in a row. You've built an amazing reputation with the company. I mean, you have to say it's, you know, you should pat yourself on the back. You're known to be very trustworthy and honest and the best deals. And that's who you want to deal with. Um, um, Love to have you join me on the travel show, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Mountain Time. I guess people may hear this pod cast across the country but it's 11 to 1 if you go to morriscolumbus.com and just click on radio it'll tell you all the stations around the country that pick up the travel show you can catch it on a podcast too there you go at morriscolumbus.com did we miss anything is there anything you want to add yeah uh like when are you gonna come i've told you (laughs) we should take the fresh living staff (laughs) on the road including mackenzie producer she's in here so she's coming with us kent are you listening (laughs) kent we want to go what do we need to do i can arrange it hey listen carrie it has been such a pleasure to work with you and Alora and the others on Fresh Living and, uh, you know, Ron and uh, Mary on the new news. What, some 17, 18 years I've done something with KUTV Channel 2, the number one. That's right. TV station in the market. Well, you're family to us, Larry. We absolutely just adore you. You know, you brighten our day when you walk in and we just, you know... Well, we're going to get you that key card. Kent, if you're listening, <laughs> let's, get, <laughs> let's get the man a key card. Okay, we'd like to wrap this up with the, what we call the Fresh Five. These are fun things that we're just going to ask you to get to know you a little better. Right. Are you ready? Fire away. And by the way, I don't know what these questions are. You have no are. idea. Yeah, you have no idea. It's brunch. What are you ordering? Philly cheesesteak sandwich. <laughs> Ooh, that sounds good. A Philly cheesesteak for brunch. Let's do this. Okay, I think I know what you may answer this, but... I'm going to ask you anyway. You're on a plane. Where are you headed? Thailand. There it is. There it is. Are you book or movie person? Would you rather read a book or would you rather watch a movie? Movie. Movie. Are you chocolate or vanilla? Oh, dark chocolate only. Oh, there it is. Milk chocolate's too gaggy sweet for me. <laughs> I'm, I, I like this... I like the 62%, 70% dark chocolate. He knows his numbers, people. Oh, yes. Now we know what to get you for gifts. Okay, dark chocolate. Last one. Best gift you've ever been given? My wife. Oh. Kathy is, you know, can I, do we have time for a very short story? Yeah, of course. Kathy is the best. Um, We've met her. You brought her in a couple times. We love Kathy. I mean, that really is the best gift I've ever received. And after that, five children and 12 grandchildren. Maybe a couple more on the way. (laughs) Hint, hint. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, um, a short while ago, Kathy and I were speaking to a enormous a couple thousand college age students. Okay, and my wife Kathy is very accomplished. Graduated from the University of Utah in computer science when women didn't do that sort of thing. Good for you know? her. 
and it was part of the College of Engineering, which women didn't go to the College of Engineering. You had to have a flat top and a slide rule to go to the <laughs> College of Engineering, you know. And uh, Mackenzie, you don't even know what a slide rule is, do you? She's shaking her <laughs> She's head. She's shaking her head, no. She probably wouldn't know what a typewriter phonograph is either. <laughs> She's shaking her head. Right, right. Anyway, um, and I, I got to introduce her. So I went through all of her accomplishments. She's done so many things in the community, just a most incredible woman that's ever walked the face of the earth. But I said, to really understand Larry and Kathy Gelwick's there are two statements, both of which are absolutely true. Statement number one, I seriously married above myself. I did, Carrie. Oh, I, she is yeah. wonderful. She is. And statement number two is Kathy agrees with statement number one. <laughs> now, if you understand that. Dynamic, happy wife, happy life. Amen to that. Amen to that. No, uh, the greatest gift, uh, I think, is uh, being alive today, friends and neighbors, living in this wonderful community, state, this nation, with all of our problems. America is still the shining beacon on the hill. Uh, why do, do people want to come here? Because of the the traditions, the history, the freedoms that we enjoy and sometimes take for granted, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and for Larry Gowitz, yeah, we well, have you. That's fine. I can open my <laughs> refrigerator and there's food. Um, I turn on the tap water. I can drink the water, you know. Mo so many people around the world go to bed hungry every night. As you can see by looking at me, I am... Never missed a meal. <laughs> anyway, I, that's, I'm so grateful just to be alive, live in this country, work with you and KUTV, and most of all, be married to the greatest woman God ever put on this planet. She is awesome. Kathy, you rock. And you know what? We are so grateful for you, Larry. Thank you for blessing us with your wisdom and your knowledge and your deals. We love that too. Got to say, you, uh, you're just an awesome guy. We love having Thank you on the you, show. Carrie. Thank, Thank you. you. It's been so fun chatting with you and please come back anytime. You know, we'll see you probably next week. Well, I'll come <laughs> back whenever you invite me. Great. Done. Yes. And one more time, where can we go to book these deals? Uh, well, to look at my speaking, LarryGelwicks.com, to book the travel deals, MorrisColumbus.com. MorrisColumbus.com. You got it. I said it enough, right? Okay, you're the best, Larry. Thank you so much. It's thank great you, to see Carrie, you. Thank you, and thank you, Mackenzie. And thank you for listening to another episode of Fresh Off the Set. Please rate, review, and subscribe, and we will see you next week. Congrats, you made it to the end. If you want to continue to freshen up your day, you can watch us on Fresh Living every weekday on CBS Channel 2 in Utah at 1 o'clock. You can also watch us on our YouTube channel, KUTV Fresh Living, and follow us on social media. We will see you next week.